The next morning, before the sun rose, Aromas Hivarma and Alvarkadayan Vandiyathevan left for Anuradhapura. After a short distance through the forest path they reached Rajapat. Vandiyathevan was surprised that the prince did not bring any other soldiers with him for bodyguard. But he had never been so excited on that day's journey. It is a blissful experience to travel through the Rehapathi in the morning which is surrounded by trees on both sides. A feeling of pride was burning in his heart that he had completed the work entrusted to him by the ancient ruler. Is that all? The desire that has been burning in his heart for many years has also been fulfilled. The darling of the Cholawala country has been seen. All over the country and city, people celebrate the bravery of any heroic youth. They were singing and praising the characteristics, the royal princes have been met. How miraculous was that meeting! Aromas Hivarman was a strange man, he had heard that it was true. Did he suddenly turn his horse and attack him and make him run away? This seems to be the secret of his success wherever he leads the army. His war style seems to be to attack the enemy in an unexpected place at an unexpected time? But is this the only secret to his continued success? How dynamic is he with the soldiers? How he holds them captive to his love? How miraculous was that meeting! Aromas Hivarman was a strange man, he had heard that it was true. Did he suddenly turn his horse and attack him and make him run away? This seems to be the secret of his success wherever he leads the army. His war style seems to be to attack the enemy in an unexpected place at an unexpected time? But is this the only secret to his continued success? How dynamic is he with the soldiers? How he holds them captive to his love. How miraculous was that meeting. Aromas Hivarman was a strange man, he had heard that it was true. Did he suddenly turn his horse and attack him and make him run away? This seems to be the secret of his success wherever he leads the army. His war style seems to be to attack the enemy in an unexpected place at an unexpected time? But is this the only secret to his continued success? How dynamic is he with the soldiers? How he holds them captive to his love? His war style seems to be to attack the enemy in an unexpected place at an unexpected time? But is this the only secret to his continued success? How dynamic is he with the soldiers? How he holds them captive to his love? His war style seems to be to attack the enemy in an unexpected place at an unexpected time? But is this the only secret to his continued success? How dynamic is he with the soldiers? How he holds them captive to his love? Just war veterans? How has he charmed the people of the country he conquered? Can this be said to be a country where a major war has recently taken place? How frolicsome the people are on the roads? How are the people in the villages on both sides minding their own business obligingly and carelessly? Is there no sign of panic or sorrow on the faces of the people? Even the sound of laughing women and children is often heard. How strange is this? What a strange man he is! When the prince was adamant that food should not be taken from the conquered people and insisted that food should come to Sanyam from the Chola country, and because of this the Pallavatare were angry and they complained to Sundara Chola. Vandiyathevan remembered all these. Moreover, he compared in his mind the brutal method of war practiced by Aditya Karikalar and the method of Dharma Yada, which Aromas Hivarma was compatible with. He himself did not like to think any less of Aditya Karikalar, who had been his master until a few days ago. However, whenever he saw the smiling faces of the villagers who lived on both sides of that Anuradhapura Rajapath, he could not help but make the above comparison. Mama! Can such scenes be seen in the countries where the ancient Karakas returned from war? Isn't the same voice everywhere listening? He also compared Aromas Hivarma's Dharma Yada method in his mind. He himself did not like to think any less of Aditha Karikalar, who had been his master until a few days ago. However, whenever he saw the smiling faces of the villagers who lived on both sides of that Anuradhapura Rajapath, he could not help but make the above comparison. Mama! Can such scenes be seen in the countries where the ancient Karakas returned from war? Isn't the same voice everywhere listening? He also compared Aromas Hivarma's Dharma Yada method in his mind. 
he himself did not like to think any less of Aditha Kari Kalar, who had been his master until a few days ago. However, whenever he saw the smiling faces of the villagers who lived on both sides of that Anuradhapura Raja path, he could not help but make the above comparison. Mama! Can such scenes be seen in the countries where the ancient Karakas returned from war? Isn't the same voice everywhere listening? However, whenever he saw the smiling faces of the villagers who lived on both sides of that Anuradhapura Raja path, he could not help but make the above comparison. Mama! Can such scenes be seen in the countries where the ancient Karakas returned from war? Isn't the same voice everywhere listening? However, whenever he saw the smiling faces of the villagers who lived on both sides of that Anuradhapura Raja path, he could not help but make the above comparison. Mama! Can such scenes be seen in the countries where the ancient Karakas returned from war? Isn't the same voice everywhere listening? Vandiyadeva's heart throbbed that he wanted to talk about so many things and ask about so many things with the prince who had such a rare character. But where is the room for conversation when the patrons are going so fast? There was only one chance to speak yes. As he was almost nearing Anuradhapura, Vandiyadeva saw a huge Buddha statue standing on the side of the road. Vandiyathevan did not pay much attention to this as there were many such statues in Sri Lanka. But he too had to stop when Pani's Selvar pulled the horse to a halt near a Kailet. Alvar Kadayan, who was going a little ahead, stopped the horse and turned towards them. Pani's Selvar stared intently at the majestic statue of Lord Buddha for some time. Wow! What a masterpiece! said. I don't know a miracle. Everywhere in this country they have such huge statues of Buddha. I don't know why. Vandiyathevan said. The prince smiled at Vandiyathevan. He said, You speak from your heart, I am happy about that. Prince. Vallavarayar has followed the custom of telling the truth only today. Said Thirumalai. O Vaishnava. Everything is Sagawasa Das Han. Ever since I saw you at Viranarayanapuram, the power of imagination has flowed on my tongue. Ever since I saw the prince, I have become accustomed to speaking the truth. Vandiyathevan said. The prince paid no heed to their war of words. He was engrossed in the appearance of the statue. He said, there are only two forms in the world that perfectly explain the wonder of sculpture. One is Nataraja and the other is Buddha. But we don't make Nataraja forms in our country in such gigantic forms. Some of the early kings in Sri Lanka were great men. The kingdom they ruled was small but their hearts were big and their devotion was great. They showed their devotion to Lord Buddha by erecting such large forms. During the Buddhist period, they showed their devotion by erecting huge stupas. After seeing the Buddha statues, viharas, and stupas in this country I am ashamed to think of the tiny Shiva temples in our Chola country. Said Pani Selvar. After saying this, Prince Buddha got off his horse and went to Silayan. He carefully looked for a while at the Padma feet of the idol and the lotus buds that adorned those feet. Then the Buddha touched the idol's feet, bowed, returned and mounted the horse as before. The horses moved a little slower. What? Looks like the prince is going to join Buddhism. What Vandiyathevan said to Tirumala fell on the prince's ears. Pani Selvar saw both of them and said, My devotion to Lord Buddha is justified. The Padma feet of that Buddha statue have conveyed an important message to me. Said. Aha! Has nothing fallen upon our ears. I got that message in the silent language. What news is that? May we know. I have been told by the Lord's Lotuses that I must come to Anuradhapura at 12 o'clock tonight near the Lake Samadurai," said Pani Selvar. 